Well, I know most of you would wonder why someone would come up with the claim that the three major ethnic groups in Nigeria were formed in the 19th century. That's not only true because kingdoms like Igala, Numpe, Beni, Ikwere, Ishekiri, and so on could have also been part of these three major tribes. And that's why this video is going to be featuring many evidences, references, and some historical reminders from the past of these tribes before they become groups and took a formal collective name. If you were to be living in the years before 1800s or earlier, you won't perceive the group called Yoruba today as one tribe, as well as others, even though they speak the same or related languages. Not only because they don't have a single government in pre-colonial times, but also because they don't used to regard themselves as one, but just different entities that are familiar with each other and they don't have a single or collective names for themselves. Names like Igbo or Yoruba came around in the 1700s to 1800s, later spread and became former in early 1900s. Now, let's examine these three facts, then see the reason why they were not different from others like Edo, Igala, Numpe, and also see the reason why these three tribes came up later in history. The general belief is that Yoruba people all have a common ancestor called Odudua in Ileife, from which his six grandsons migrated from to form all other Yoruba entities, which their kingdoms and names include Oluwu of Owu, Onisabe of Sabe, Onikopo of Kopo, Orogun of Ila, Ala Ketu of Ketu and Oromion, which is Alafin of Oyo. Later, it is from these six places that Ibadan, Ogomosho, Ijesha, Owu, and several others emerged with their own kings. Due to war and disagreements, people also migrated from these places to other places to form other tribes, which are now minority tribes in present Nigeria. They include Ishekiri, Olukumi, in Delta, and others we might mention later in this video. Once they are left, they are their own government, I mean kings who are independent. Although this entity recognizes Ileife as their source, they really don't have anything to do with it in terms of authority. They ward each other as they would to other tribes that does not claim ancestry to Ife. Big kingdoms like Oyo would read smaller ones for slaves or tributes, and even some weak towns were totally destroyed. If it was not left out of action as part of it were destroyed in a war with Owu in 1811. This is so because in those days, what Oyo sees are the Jebus, Ekitis, Egbas, and not their tribe, and that's how it is for every other kingdom as well. People were just Egba man or an Ijebu man, or an Oyo man, who just happened to speak a dialect, which were later called Yoruboid language. I would also like to make mention that when someone is called a father of a nation, it does not mean he is the biological father of everyone, or everyone came from him. It means the personality played a key role in shaping the nation. Even if there were several villages, that Odudua met when he came from the east and joined together to be the first king and called it Ileife. Some kingdoms like Ijebu do claim they are not Odudua children. The Ijebu said they met with him while coming to their present location when they met him. Their leader gave Odudua his only daughter of which bore Odudua a son. That son later became the line of king that ruled Ijebu today. So, how did the present Yoruba tribe emerge? When the British and the missionaries were establishing their authority and presence in present-day Nigeria, they found out that there were around 300 groups in the area, and that makes administration and evangelism in the areas difficult, 
when it comes to making reference and divining boundaries. Therefore, they thought it wise to group these people according to the languages they speak. Prior to this, when Oyo and Aousas were trading in the late 1700s, the Oyo people are already being called Yariba by traders from the north of Nigeria. The Yariba was corrupted to Yoruba, and the Oyos were the first to be called Yoruba. The first newspaper in Nigeria, which existed in 1859, is a reference to this. Note that it says Ara, which means people of, therefore, different from Ni Ede, which is in languages. It was later given to the old group called Yoruba today on documents, but it did not foster yet. Groups like Ijebu, Egbas rejected it, but by late 1800s, through writings and publications, which includes that of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, the name Yoruba started fostering on other kingdoms, and it was being used to refer to the entities now regarded as Yoruba. However, this does not include Ishekiri or Ulukomi, who speaks Yoruba. Igalas were also excluded. Igala language is also a Yoruba language. And why it is argued that they came up from the peasant Yoruba group. It is not disputed that Yoruba groups migrated there in times of war. Yoruba was formed based on dialect, history, and geographical area that was known to the people who formed it. And based on all these criteria, places like Igala, Ishekiri, Olukumi, even Bini would have not been excluded but included as part of Yoruba. And those that might want to argue about Bini, if Ijebus could be regarded as part of Yoruba tribe, probably because Oduduwa's son is a reigning dynasty. Oduduwa's son is a reigning dynasty in Bini as well, as therefore they shared history, even gods, and borrowed from each other languages. All it takes is the presence of someone that thinks they should be together as Yoruba, to bring it up back then, and it will be accepted. Also, don't forget the presence of Ni of Ife, as once claimed that Bini is part of Yoruba, and also Bini generally do claim that Odudua came from Bini. Similar thing in the Igbo political organization in this period, there was never an Igbo tribe or group. The largest political unit was the village which are mostly aided by council of elders and the shared history and other similarities with other tribes in their area which includes the Ikwere. Till today, they don't totally accept each other as one and there is no official definite territorial demography as to what part is Igbo and not. Taking the Igbo deltas as a case study, there has been series of arguments as to whether some specific Delta tribes are Igbo or not. In my next video, I am going to be talking about the theories to the origin of the names Igbo, Yoruba, and maybe Aousa.